Hi, this is Lauren from Lauren Taylor Made, and today I'm going to show you how I created the watercolor background of this happy birthday card. In this card, we're using Happy Days by RG Studio 360. So I have my setup ready to go. I have my reinkers on a clear block. I also have my water brush pen and a spritzer ready to go. Since watercolor can take some time to dry, we're going to make this part of the card first. As you can see, I have some watercolor paper washed onto this cutting mat surface to help keep the paper from moving and also from warping. Uh, like I said before, I have a spritzer and a medium to large watercolor brush and they are both filled with water ready to go. On the small clear block, I already have a few drops of some reinker of some blue water-based ink that I will be using for the background. So now that my tools and my ink are ready to go, I'm going to start with spritzing the paper towards the center and picking up color using my water brush pen and the reinker. I'm not trying to touch the paper, but rather squeeze the water pen so that more water with the ink seeps into the water that is already on the paper. I continue to do this until I'm satisfied with the water and the color on the paper. This includes spritzing and picking up more ink and squeezing the water and the ink into different spots of the card to help bring more color and to create watercolor patterns that are uncontrollable but make the card so unique. Now I'm sure there are lots of other ways to do this technique and to be honest I've tried a few with no success. I usually end up discouraged and I just really have a hard time with these backgrounds. So I found this technique just to be best for me but I'm sure you could find lots of different videos with other ways to achieve this look. To spread the ink and the water around, I pick up my cutting mat and really just go back and forth to spread water and including spritzing more, so more blends around the card. This is definitely messy, but I'm also working on a small surface so that way you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna speed up the video because I was being a little bit nitpicky and wanted more color on the card. I ran out of water in my water brush, so I picked up another one and added some more color to the card. Once I was finally satisfied with the color on my paper, I picked up my heat tool and started to dry the water on the paper. I also used the heat tool as a way to spread more color and to get more color in different spots onto the watercolor paper. Now that my card base is finally dry, I'm going to take a black splattering tool to flick on some black ink onto the card base to add a little bit more color and to tie in with the background of my card base. To ensure that the watercolor paper is fully dry even with the new black ink splatter I use my heat gun again because I want to make sure my background is fully dry before assembling the card. I'm trying to be a clean as you go crafter, so I'm using a paper towel to clean up any excess water before removing the card base from the cutting mat. I carefully removed the washi tape and take a look at my background. I think it turned out amazing. I love the depth and different texture watercolor gives a background. I cut off the white trim around the card and I'm going to adhere it directly onto a piece of craft paper. I wanted to build a simple background on my card base so that my watercolor and my happy days bloom was really the focus of the card. I play with the background and figuring out where I wanna place my bloom onto the card and really which is my favorite spot of the watercolor background to be shown with the bloom. Once I'm finally satisfied with how the watercolor and the bloom is going to be placed onto the card, I pop up the watercolor background onto my card base. I made my card base out of some black cardstock paper, just your typical A2 size. Next, I'm gonna pop up the blooms onto the front of the card. I colored in my flowers using Letra Set Pro markers. I created a olive type leaf color and a peach flower. I just thought that that color would look really pretty on top of a blue watercolor background. I also alternate between thinner and thicker pop squares or foam squares 
so that way it gives a little bit more dimension without being too bulky on the front of my card. I also used foam squares to pop up the sentiment, happy days, since I used happy birthday in my last card, I wanted to create another card with more of a generic sentiment that could be used for a congratulations or even another happy birthday card. My sentiment and blooms were also printed and cut using my silhouette cameo to create that perfect outline around the images. I also tied a triple bow using some black twine and I'm just placing it behind the blooms. I'd like to have a little bit more dimension to my card and more texture, so twine is really a great way to add that. Next, my type A personality won't let me have any images come off my card base, so I just trim off the little bits that are sticking out so that way the card can still fit into an A2 size envelope. Next, I'm gonna add some glaze to my card. I'm going to put some glaze in the center of my bloom and add some chunky clear glitter. I have to have a little bit of shiny on my card, otherwise I just don't feel like it's perfect. And I'm also going to apply some glaze to the happy days sentiment. And although I am a perfectionist crafter, I don't strive for perfection when outlining my sentiments with the glaze. I still think it gives that a little bit of handmade look when it's just not quite perfect. And here are the cards fully done. Happy days and happy birthday. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and these watercolor backgrounds and I hope you try to make it yourself. Thanks again for joining me.